Yes, uh, to uh, continue and uh, finish my <coughs> dark story of uh, the construction of the European New Order, there is a question. Why do uh, French planners decided to extend the European Monetary Union to countries like Greece, Portugal, Spain, and next, Ireland, and a part of Eastern Europe. Because they had to solve a contradiction. Indeed, we will destroy consumption, the purchasing power in domestic economies of France and Germany. But what about profits? So the solution since the start and mainly during the Mitterrand regime was exports. But exports to where? There is a crucial point. Too many people ignore. The Germans were extremely reluctant to enter the monetary union. There was a time, my dear friends, especially during the early 70s, when fiscal and monetary policy was much more expansionist in Germany than in France. So, why could the Mitterrand regime oblige Germany to enter the Union? It's simple. They finance, they bought the French, the German politicians. The coal government the, was entirely financed by secret funds from the French. But there is more. There was one country which was hated by the French establishment for a very long time. And that country was your country. The obsession of the French technocrats, economists, was to destroy the industrial base of Italy because they accuse the Italian governments of having 
always being too soft relative to wages, unions, and purchasing power. So, how could they destroy the Italian economy? By imposing a re-evaluation of the currency. When Italy decided to adopt the euro, it is as though there had been a re-evaluation of at least 45% of prices. Thereby, Italians could no more export outside the Eurozone. So, this is a problem which makes me laugh when people say, but if we leave the Euro, it will be a nightmare. Italy was completely destroyed. Imagine relative prices of Italian industry on the American market, for instance, were increased by 40%. So exports of Italy collapsed at once. And now, why did Italy being killed, they decided to seduce Greece, Portugal, Ireland? For the same reasons. To increase exports. They were countries without industrial base or whose industrial base was <coughs> completely destroyed by the reflection of the currency. So, Italy, Greece, Southern Europe, Eastern Europe became some kind of colonial markets, new imperial markets for German and French industry. And there is a question sometimes people say, oh, but the Germans are so uh, skilled. But why did Germany and France had the possibility of <coughs> exporting? Because of previous state investment, the origin of the so-called German miracle is the Nazi regime. It is a question I studied with my close friend the sole French historian daring to address modern problems Annie Lacroix. During the Nazi regime, German industry benefited first from 
Kajislev Labour. During the Nazi era, the share of labor income collapsed by 50%. And during the war, the most respectable German corporations benefited from slave labor hired by the SS from the concentration camps. At the same time, the regime invested billions in terms of dollars in German industry, creating techniques that were so advanced that they couldn't be used for 10 or 12 years after the war. Exactly the same in France. But there remain the problems. Exports how we destroy the domestic economy, Italy, Greece destroyed, but from where comes the income? And the answer is very simple. When you look at data, aggregate net exports from Germany and France since the start of the Eurozone are identical to aggregate state deficits in Southern and Eastern Europe, thereby Greece, Italy, Spain provided unlimited net profits or net savings to the German and to the French industry. 85% of net German exports, and the same for France, are within the Eurozone. It is why, contrary to what they could say, they will never accept that Greece or Italy leaves peacefully the Eurozone. Because the German and the French corporations will be at once short of profits. Thereby, it is a joke when countries like Italy, Greece are accused of running deficits without deficits of your country, of Greece. The whole German and French corporations were already bankrupt. And I have a quotation 
from Jacques Attali in 1985 at the final stage of the discussions on the forthcoming Treaty of Maastricht. Our main purpose is forever to destroy any industrial capacity outside Germany and France. And indeed, there remain the problems Why did governments of your country, Greece and Spain, accepted such a suicide of their economy and society? Well, here is the problem of corruption, ignorance, and we must never forget that it was the time <coughs> when France spent a lot of money to buy the support of your politicians and ruling technocrats. Now, the story <coughs> is somewhat achieved. The European Union is created, but now we have to address the so-called financial crisis generated by the public debt. In friendly debates with my American friends, I said that such an event couldn't be deemed as a financial instability crisis along Minsky analysis. Minsky could never have imagined that public debt could generate what could be deemed the new Black Plague, which is devastating Europe. So what happened? Well, <clears throat> people who built the Euro system were indeed completely ignoring the very functioning of modern economy. What they had in mind was some kind of neo-agrarian economy back to some age before the Industrial Revolution. So, 
the cut public expenditures. The Mitterrand regime program of deflation in 1983 was the first who explicitly targeted a long run increase in unemployment. For the first time, without any hope of going back to full employment. But what was the outcome? The private sector stopped at once to invest. Private domestic investment in Germany and France started to collapse. And now it is minus zero. Consumption collapsed. Taxes collapsed. Thereby, governments everywhere in the Eurozone had to run deficits, but they were unexpected, unwanted deficits, which were not the counterpart of productive expenditures. And they were surprised. So great was their ignorance of modern economics they never heard about Lerner, Godley Laws, etc., etc. But they run deficits. They don't have any more control on creation of money. Thereby, they were obliged and they were, I must say, very happy to do so, at least in France and Germany, to beg money to the so-called bonds market. And what is the so-called bond markets? It is the cartel of the most important banks in France and Germany. There is not the least competition amid the cartel. So, banks Uh, yes, later. Uh, I was asked a question, could I name uh, the uh, Italian politicians paid uh, by the French technocrats? I must say, and on this point, I agree with Annie Lacroix. All the Christian Democrats 
during the 70s, and especially with a very strong impact of the Church and the Vatican, we must never forget that since the start, the Church was a key player in the construction of Europe. So, now, governments were obliged to pile up debt. And banks jumped on state bonds. Why? Because they were no more will from French and German corporations to ask for credit. Household started to become over-indebted. So, the state debt became some kind of miracle. Cornucopia, paradise for bankers. They could impose the rates of interest they wished. So, the real rates of interest since the early 70s attained a level which had never been attained since the last days of the ancient regime. And we were back at the time of Marie Antoinette and Louis the 16. But indeed, there was some problem. On one side, public debt became the major source of income from banks. But on the other side, the state was deemed of being a bad corporation that should be wiped out. So, the real value of the debt indeed collapsed. And so, now we enter the mystery of the plague, of the new Black Plague, the public debt crisis. It started in Greece. Why did Greece behave in a shocking way, not the least? The Greek government was obliged to increase expenditures since the private sector in Greece was completely absent. But Greek indeed was a weak country. And now Bankers 
started to be more and more afraid of the possibility of a change in economic policy. So, what did they do? They raised a meat of the bankruptcy of the Greek state, of the possibility of the Greek to default. They forgot that default always existed, but what they had in mind was not the least the fear of default. What they had in mind was to impose more and more outrageous financial exploitation all over Europe. And because banks don't want to be repaid, what could they do with the money? Nothing. What they want is income. And so, the plague started in Greece and the plague, like in the Middle Ages, spread all over Europe. And if there is a crime, it is a crime of the French and the German governments. They completely surrender their sovereignty to the so-called bond market. It was a total abdication. And how did they do that? by starting a race to death of deflation. And now we enter the most outrageous phase of the death of European economy. to maintain banks' net wealth. Government impose deflation, deflation, and deflation. And it is the beginning of the end for the system. I shall finish on this conclusion. Thank you.